Hello and welcome to another Wednesday live stream. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time watching, our aim here is to help you improve your English. My name's Craig from the website mansioningles.com where you can study English and learn English for free with our resources and courses. And also we have a podcast. Go to inglespodcast.com to listen every Sunday or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And with me this week, I'm delighted to welcome back. If you have seen Lynn before, you know who she is. You can't get enough of her. It's Lynn from putitlikethis.com. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Craig. <laughs> I'm laughing so much because when you put that music on at the beginning, by the time we start, I, I think when our pictures come out, we should be dancing or something. I well, I'm dancing <laughs> behind the scenes. I'm dancing, the scenes. <laughs> getting up my energy, and I'm sure you are after a long day working. So, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so for people, if you don't know me, I can see that Hema's joined us already. Hi, Hema. <laughs> You're always one of the first. Um, my name's Lynn, and I'm from putitlikethis.com, and I'm an online teacher exclusively, and I I make tailor-made courses for people. So um, if you're interested in having a, a course that's specifically to try to help you achieve your objectives, your particular objectives in English, then I'll design a course for you and then we follow that online. So if you want more information, go to my website at putitlikethis.com. Yeah. And if you're watching the replay, thank you for spending time with us. This week, we're going to talk about life hacks and you might know the word hack from computers and technology where you find a way around something where you're not going directly to the solution because maybe the solution isn't obvious. You're finding an effective way to do something that's maybe a little bit different from the normal. So we're going to give you some life hacks today to hopefully help you with different things in your life. I'm glad you've explained that word to me because when you've suggested this class, I know the concept of what a life hack is, but it's not a word that I use very much. But you, you, the the, the word I know is hacker from hacker. A, mm -hmm. a computer, but a hacker is a different meaning, isn't it? Because a hacker is somebody who goes into a to, to a computer program and hijacks the computer program. Well, almost. sometimes, but there are black hat hackers and white hack hackers. Oh my goodness, you're teaching me and... more. What's a black white <laughs> a black, well, a black hat, hat and a hat white hat? Hacker is obviously what you've just described, a person who has nefarious or negative uh, reasons for hacking into your computer, maybe to ah, the baddie, steal the money, baddie. the bad people. Yeah, the people oh, who okay. try to get into your bank account or tell you you've you've won something in some uh -huh. African country and they're going to give you a lot of money. No, but a white hat hacker is somebody who does a similar thing with computers, but for good reasons. For ah, example, okay. a person might find a problem with a Microsoft program. Uh -huh. And they might report it to Microsoft so that bad people don't get access to your mm -hmm. computer. So they're really protecting and they're doing a good thing. So, yeah, it can be good. It can be bad. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, Craig, but there's something going wrong mm -hmm. with my my telephone and something started. I've got to go and put my telephone away. Excuse me, because I can't stop. No it. worries. <laughs> while Just you're, a moment. While, sorry. While you're Somebody's doing that, hacking my telephone right now. You see? <laughs> Just I think it's Erasmo from Brazil who's hacking your telephone from over there in the Amazon. Hello, Erasmo. Good to see you here. And hello, Heidi. That's okay. You haven't missed anything, Heidi, so don't apologize for being late. We were just explaining what a hacker is and that today we're going to talk about some life hacks, which are little tricks and things you can do to make life a little easier and a little better. So let's begin with our first group of hacks, and we're going to start off in the kitchen in the kitchen. That's a nice place to be. <laughs> That's a nice place to start, especially at this time of night where I'm getting hungry, at least over mm -hmm. here in Europe. It's uh, <laughs> ne nearly dinner time. So uh, what's our first hack? So our first hack is something that I 
hadn't known, but obviously you were the one who thought of this hack. <laughs> and um, and I'm going to try it because it says you put a wooden spoon across the pan of boiling water. So I suppose if this is a spoon and this is the pan, you're going to put it like that, I suppose you mean. Yeah. You put it across a pan of boiling water and are. it stops the the it stops the water boiling over. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't tried it, but apparently it works. I don't know if anybody watching in the chat has tried this. If you have and you believe this works, please tell us. But it is all over the internet. Lots of people really? saying this. I don't know scientifically why it works, but apparently if you put a wooden spoon across boiling water, it won't boil over. That phrasal That's verb to amazing. boil over means the uh -huh. water comes out of the side of the yeah. pot or to pan. To boil over, yes, that's a phrasal verb, uh -huh. to boil yeah, over. To boil over. But that, that, that is amazing to me. But maybe it's something to do with the, do you think it could be that the water, that the, the wooden spoon some somehow absorbs the steam of the water? I have no idea, but Erasmo says he's going to, uh, uh, Hema says she's going to, um, she's tried it and it's true. She's oh, seen really? it. She has seen it done. So you've seen it done. You've seen Emma. it done. And it's true. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right. So I'm going to be very excited now. <laughs> Erasmo is going to try it as well. So please oh. let us know how you get on. And next time I'm boiling an egg, I will uh -huh. put a spoon over the pan to stop it boiling over for sure. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Next hack then. Uh huh. Oh, Jaime, Jaime Gonzalez. Hello, Jaime. Jaime says it works too. Okay. We'll take your right. word for it, Jaime. Yeah. But okay. I want to know, I want to know, there must be somebody who's a physicist or a, 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 what do you have to be to know things like that? And a chef? <laughs> <laughs> no, but there must be some, there must be some... Physical explanation. Science, scientific. Physics. We need a scientist. There must be a scientific explanation why that works i can't understand how that can work apart from know. turning the heat down yeah? yeah so i want a scientist here to tell me why that works <laughs> well the next one is a lot easier for me to understand we don't need a scientist to tell us about this it's putting pancake batter in a ketchup bottle and you can pour the mixture easily into a pan now i think i've got a picture i can show you here of this although I'm, I apologize, it might be a bit small. So you take a ketchup or similar plastic bottle, you wash it, obviously, you wash it, um, make sure there's no ketchup inside, and the batter is the mixture of the, what is it, Lynn? Is it eggs and milk it's, to make it's pancakes? It's flour, flour, eggs, it's flour, egg, and milk. Egg, mm -hmm. Flour, eggs, and milk, maybe a little salt. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the batter. So when you mix it all together, you get a kind of a thick liquid, which is called the batter, um, when you make pancakes. So, you know, sometimes maybe it's in a jug or a bowl and you, you want to be very precise and careful how you put it in the frying pan. Well, just fill up a, an empty ketchup bottle, <laughs> squeeze it, uh -huh. and then you have your pancake batter. Well, I mean, it's a clever thing, one has to say. But as a practical mother in the kitchen, I would say that's too much washing up. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. That's even more washing up than I make anyway. <laughs> do you have a dishwasher or do you wash up everything by hand? Both. I I, I mean, I, we have a dishwasher, but obviously pans and things like that, I wash up by hands. And you can't put a ketchup. I mean, if you use that ketchup thing, You've got to put that. That wouldn't really clean in a dishwasher, I don't think. No, and um, and then and then you've got to pour the batter into the bottle, and you're probably getting the batter everywhere anyway. So I do, just don't mind having a few drips on my kitchen bench. Now there's mm -hmm. some vocabulary coming in here, right? So we have bench which is the work surface that you work on in the kitchen. In American English, they call it a counter, don't they? Kitchen counter, mm -hmm. they say in American English. And in British English, we say the, the bench, B-E-N-C-H. 
And, uh, and of course, when you're mixing your batter and you're putting it in the pan, what happens? You get a drip here, a drip there, and a drip in the pan. But then you just wipe it up, personally. I, I would yeah. find that too much, too much hassle. It looks maybe, maybe it's neater for perfectionists. I'm not a perfectionist there. <laughs> and as well, going back to the wooden spoon across the boiling water. Oh, he's um, got an answer, has he? He got an answer. Hi, Jess. Jess just, has just joined us. According to Erasmo, it's because of the heat transfer. Oh, um, maybe from the boiling water to the to the, the spoon. steam to the spoon uh -huh. now yeah. i know and here is another hack that is not on our list but i will tell you if you have hot water or very very hot liquid you're making tea or coffee and you're using a glass instead of a cup uh-huh if you put a spoon in the cup in the glass before you pour the water the glass will not break because sometimes the glass breaks ah. because of the heat of the water. If it's boiling water, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. But as Erasmo says, the heat transfer, the heat transfers to the spoon. So the spoon mm -hmm. gets hot and the glass doesn't break. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. one reason why I never make a cup of tea in a mug with the spoon mm -hmm. inside. Because you want the boiling water to be really boiling when it goes on the tea. Yeah. Never make tea in a glass. <laughs> no. No, we don't make tea in a glass. British people don't make tea in glasses, no. <laughs> and Siam says put the ingredients in a bottle and shake it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. idea. That's that's a, a possibility too. Uh -huh. Now, what's our next one? Um, boiling eggs. Ah, no. This is, this is a big topic about how to boil your eggs so that when you peel the eggs to pe remember the verb to peel p e w -E e l which is there we peel an orange or we peel fruit when we take the skin away from the fruit and we also have this phrase to peel an egg which is when you take the shell off the hard boiled egg and uh, and this is frustrating isn't it when you try to peel eggs and yes. and the and the, the if, if you're really unlucky the the shell is really sticks really really closely to the egg and then it takes you hours to take all the little bits of shell off it doesn't it and then yeah, other eggs horrible. shell in one or two goes so you have found this hack which is boiling eggs with a teaspoon of baking powder mm -hmm. that's sodium bicarbonate isn't it uh -huh. yes and the shell will peel off more easily now i didn't know that one but i have another trick for that well, I know you have, have you, a little thing. Do you thing use that... this one? Do you use this one? No, I don't. I haven't used that, but I read it mm. on the internet, and I think it's true. Now you've got a little thing that makes a hole. I have in the a little egg, pincher, you? you see, yeah. and uh, I think I showed that we did that when we did a class on gadgets. And mm -hmm. in Germany, they have this little apparate, this little gadget, where it has a little pin, and you sit the egg on the top, and you push it down, and it puts a tiny little hole through the shell. And when you boil eggs with that, then I find that they're really easy to peel. But another reason I think somebody said to me too is that um, what you have to do is that when the eggs go in the boiling waters, I've heard another hack for this. The other hack is that you should boil the eggs from cold water. Mm -hmm put the eggs in the pan and then boil the eggs for however many minutes and then they come out and they're easy to peel. But I don't boil my eggs that way. I put my eggs which have been in the fridge, I put them in the pan of boiling water. So they're very, very cold and they're going straight into boiling water. And they go water. very boiling water. Do they not and, crack? Well, not because I've got the hole in them, you see. They don't ah, crack. Okay. But I read somewhere that it's to do with the difference in temperature, which makes whether the egg sticks to the shell or not. I don't know. There's lots of things in boiling an egg. We have a saying in English where they say that if they think you can't cook, that you're useless, that you're not a very practical person, they say he can't even boil an egg. That's and I me. always say... It's actually very difficult to boil an egg. 
<laughs> that's not an, that's not the easiest thing to do in cooking. It's cooking not. eggs is really difficult. Frying eggs is really difficult. And scrambling to, to fry and a good egg. And to scrambling scramble eggs, an egg is difficult. And that's why the very famous British chef Gordon Ramsay, when he interviews a chef for a uh -huh. top position, he makes them scramble an egg. I know. Because uh -huh. it's very difficult to get it absolutely right. So that's exactly. his test to get the right. Of a good chef. Well, did you never see that movie, Craig? That movie about with Helen Mirren about uh, she sets up this. Well, there's an Indian family who set up an Indian restaurant opposite Helen Mirren's restaurant which is uh, has a Michelin star. Have you seen that movie? No, I don't think I have. No, I, I like can't Helen remember Mirren, what the name. Think. I can't remember what the name of the movie is, but it's a really good movie. And there's a scene in there. She's this. She plays this um, really famous Michelin chef mm -hmm. who's got the Michelin stars. And they eventually becomes she becomes friends with the Indian family. And her test for her potential chefs is that she makes them make her them make her an omelet because apparently making an omelet is also very difficult yep yeah it is so um Emma mm. says rotating the eggs in the hands until the entire shell is broken is a good ah, way to take off is that shell. a good way yeah. oh okay there you are very good very good uh -huh. hack there, Emma. thank you there you are so obviously eggs we should do a master class in eggs and egg cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Go to work on an egg. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, speaking of food, which we are because we're in the kitchen, have you ever had a pizza, either a takeaway or got a pizza delivered or maybe cooked a pizza yourself in the oven and you haven't eaten all of the pizza? What do you do? Put it in the fridge the next day. Think, oh, I've got one or two slices of pizza. I'll heat them up in the microwave and have them for lunch. But they're not the same they're not as nice because the the crust the pastry of the pizza is soggy which means it's not hard and crispy it goes very soggy so a life hack for pizza that you're reheating the next day reheat in the microwave with a glass of water and that will stop the crust which is the pastry the outside of the pizza getting soft and chewy Chewy, the adjective, if you chew, mm -hmm. then you're using your teeth to break up the food, chewing gum. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. chewy is where it's it's like chewing gum. It's not very crusty. Mm -hmm. So And the other sure you... word that you used there was soggy. Soggy, soggy. is S-O-G-G-Y. And soggy means that it has a lot of a high water content, doesn't it? That it's yep. it's it's wet. Now I didn't know that hack. Please tell me, Craig, that you've tried this hack. No, it's another one that I read. Craig, you are an absolute cheat. Do you know everybody here? He, this was his idea. This class. He said to me. He said to me, "Let's do life hacks." And I, and I'm, and I'm racking my brains, thinking, thinking, do I know all of these life hacks? And Craig presented a whole sheet of all these life hacks, and I thought, what a clever internet guy. research. What a clever guy! I'm, well, no. To be fair, I'm not. I'm not r usually in the kitchen. The only time I'm <laughs> I'm in the kitchen is to is to eat from the fridge or wash up the dishes or clean up the kitchen. So I'm not. I don't cook. I don't enjoy cooking in the kitchen. So I'm not very good with <laughs> with kitchen hacks. But um, if you do try this at home, <laughs> let us know. If it works. I hope you're not telling your wife. Oh, this. This pizza crust is a bit soggy. You should go on the internet and learn how to do it better. <laughs> there, there isn't there isn't usually any pizza left. Don't worry about that. Now, so I've caught you out here. This is not have? this is not real. You had me thinking all weekend. I w I had my thinking cap on. That's you an were... expression. We put our thinking caps on when we're thinking hard. And I'm thinking hard and I'm thinking, I don't know any more life hacks. And he said to me, Craig said to me, I'm telling everybody our gossip now. Craig said to me, 
you think of some and put them in a different <laughs> colour on the document. So all weekend, I'm tearing my hair out. And, and you I'm were thinking, thinking, the life hacks, what life hacks do I know? I must know life hacks. I'm a mum with three kids. I must know life hacks. And I think I only found about five and I put them in the document with a different colour. And I said, I think we've got enough. And I felt really guilty because I thought I hadn't contributed to this lesson as much as Craig. But Craig has got them all off the Internet. And I bet you were thinking, I bet you were thinking when you first read the list, oh, Craig's been spending a lot of time in the kitchen lately. What's I going did. on? It's... And I thought, wow, you're so practical. <laughs> well, the next one is yours. So the next one is chopping Herbs. What's, what yeah. does that verb to chop mean? Chop herbs. So to chop is when you use a knife and you cut things in very small pieces with this kind of action, right? So it's not this action. This action is slicing, isn't it, really? This is slicing when mm -hmm. you use your knife this way. But when you use like knife this way, lots of sh quick action and you go straight through something, that is chopping uh -huh. so we often chop vegetables like carrots and onions and things and sometimes in recipes you have to chop maybe parsley do you know the the, the herb parsley parsley mm -hmm. is a herb that we eat a lot with fish it's green um sometimes you chop chives i like chives they have like a kind of onion flavor um they're also green, but like cylindrical, very long. Uh, coriander is another one. And usually these herbs, they come in bun bunches, bunches, B-U-N-C-H. We have like a bunch of flowers as well. So they come in bunches and they're very long. And when you chop them, they're a bit difficult to chop because they kind of stick to the knife. And it's hard to get them all very, very fine. And I saw this life hack from a very famous chef called Jamie Oliver. Do you know Jamie Oliver? I do. English chef from your part of the world. He's from London, Essex. isn't he? Essex. He's from Essex. Essex. Yeah. He's from Essex, yeah. So, and he he did this on one of his programs, and it was ever so clever. He 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 gets the the bunch of herbs, and he rolls them up. So imagine you're rolling a cigar <laughs> or something, yeah? So he has them down and he tries to fold them over, fold them over, roll them up. And he rolls them into a, a like, a, so he's got like, it's it's more like a, like a cigarette size. And he holds them down really tightly and then he chops. And then it's so easy and they're all chopped and they're really, really small. So I have tried that and it definitely works. <laughs> Okay, I'll take your word for it. It seems quite easy, but if you don't know it, then you then don't do it. It's not something so you, you do. Like when I when before time. I saw it, I would be spending ages trying to to chop the herbs. Uh -huh. yeah. That's a very good. That's a very good. Um, a very good hack. And speaking of chopping things, because you mentioned chopping herbs, and you also chop onions, mm -hmm. and that's that makes you cry, especially if the onion's very strong. It does something to your eyes, and you start crying tears run down your face however apparently and i haven't tried this either but if you chew <laughs> Craig, <laughs> if you chew what i don't a chop, fake. I don't, what a I don't fake chop you are. onions if you if you chew chewing gum now we had the verb to chew a couple of minutes ago chewing so you mm -hmm. put chewing gum in your mouth um while you're peeling and Lynn explained peeling before about peeling the egg. When you're peeling and cutting onions, then you won't cry. I also heard if you do it underwater, because mm -hmm. then whatever is in the onion stays underwater, but then you have to dry the onion, so that seems a bit silly. But apparently, mm -hmm. if you chew chewing gum, now if you believe this, if you've tried this at home, please tell us in the chat that it is actually true. But this is what I read in several <laughs> on several websites, and it looks to be a fact. <laughs> Erasmo, what do you think? Do you think that's true? I think everybody needs to tell. <laughs> Come on, you need to people, please tell us what you think about this this thing. Now, with onions, I I do know how to cut onions, and I don't chew chewing gum. 
on principle, I don't chew chewing gum, so I don't like chewing gum. But um, the the trick when you're cutting onions, not to cry, is to cut them in the correct way. And the okay. onions have a top and a bottom. The, w- the, the bottom of the onion has lots of little roots on it, which is where it sits in the earth. And the top of the onion is like has been chopped because that's it's got the, the green shoots which come out of the top of the earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So what when you when you get an onion, you never ever ever chop anywhere near the roots because the thing that makes you cry is when you chop the roots. So okay. what you do is you chop off the top of the onion first, and then you slice the onion vertically so that you have two halves. And as soon as you slice vertically, you put it face down mm-hmm. on your chopping board, mm-hmm. right? You take off the outer skin, right? And you try not to tear the roots when you're taking off the outer skin. So imagine you've taken off the outer skin, you chop the the top of the onion off, you slice it down vertically and you put the two halves on the chopping board. And then you make a series of vertical slices (laughs) from the root to the end. But you're still cutting across yes, the onion. Yes, but you do so... not. No, you're not cutting. You're cutting vertical slices, right, from the root, but you don't cut in the root. The root's still holding the onion, right? And you cut the vertical slices, you switch it around, and then you chop that way. And then all of that goes into tiny little bits. And then the end, you have the the bit with the with the root which you haven't chopped and then you put that immediately away in the bin you throw it away if you leave it open then you'll start crying and that you're you've tried you've done that i know this i'm a professional and i do not cry okay okay well nancy i hope you're paying attention (laughs) (laughs) i hope you you understood that nancy next time you chop an onion try lynn's (laughs) try my way Uh uh-huh yeah, try, try try Lynn's method before mine because I haven't actually tested mine. So mm-hmm. try Lynn's no. <laughs> first. <laughs> right, let's move on to some household hacks. So we're going out of the kitchen now to <laughs> various parts of the house. And there's one thing. Now, this I have tried. This I have household. tried. Great. And <laughs> I just want to get my, my picture ready. Because our first household hack is to tie a knot in one of your earphone cords to remember which is left and which is right. So these are my earphones. Not to be confused, which many people do, with these, which are... Which is your headset. Headphones. So headphones headphones are bigger and they cover your ear. And Mm -hmm. earphones are smaller and they tend to go in your ear so you tie a knot and this is a knot and uh, we can't one... see you have to move more to the middle oh no, i'm sorry way. that's it's, it yeah mm-hmm. this is a knot i've tied a mm-hmm. knot in one of my earphones i've tied it in the in the right one and then next time you put in your earphones you always remember that this is the right side because and even why though is I've that got important? a very well, I've got a very small. Same? I've got a very small R there, uh huh, which is really difficult to see. So yeah. Usually, I'm looking. Is that is that the R? Does that go in here? Because one's right and one's left. But why and is it important? Which why do you have to shape. have one earphone? Be- ah, because, because of the shape. shapes. Yeah. Ah, I don't like yeah. earphones. I hate the feeling of earphones. That's why I always have a headset. Uh huh. And this is the cord. The cord is another word for cable. Uh-huh. The, so I have tried this the last few days. However, I forgot if I tied the knot in the right <laughs> side right or, the left. or the left side. And I think, is that the, did, I, did I tie the right or the left? So for me, it hasn't worked. <laughs> I don't think it would work for me either. But you know why it wouldn't work for me? Why? Is that I'm one of those people, I don't know if any of our listeners, uh, any of our students are like me, but I have a serious problem between distinguishing between right and left. Really? Yes. With your shoes, uh, for example? No, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, I know 
with which is my right and which is my left. But if somebody puts me on the spot, I don't know if you know that experience, to put somebody on the spot, which means to ask somebody spontaneously, show me your right hand, then I, I freeze. And I have to do, in my brain, I have to pretend that I'm writing. And then I know that I write with my right hand. So if you say, if you shouted at me now, Lynn, put your left hand up. Put your left hand in my, up. In my brain, I'm going. <laughs> right. So I have to figure out which hand I write with to know that that's my right hand. And then I go to my left. Right. And I've had that problem my entire life. It was a disaster when I was learning to drive. When the I was thinking test, of learning to drive because they say when the, left hand down, right hand down on down, the wheel. Oh, God, oh God no. Right I indicator, mean, left when indicator. When people do that to me, my dad used to do that to me when I was trying to reverse. He would go right hand down, right hand down. And I'd be gone, it doesn't help. I don't know. <laughs> and I get really flustered and frustrated oh, dear, because it's no good. If, if you need to give me time, I cannot do it that fast. And I've had that block in my mind forever. So like, for example, uh, when people are saying, right here, right, turn right, turn left. I'm always a little bit delayed um, in knowing which is my right and which is my left. And I've never got better at it. It's just, it's a little problem that I have. <laughs> do, you, do you have wedding ring? Do you have a wedding ring? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. And, that's and so, of course, and that's hand. another, yeah, I mean, that's another trick. But it's just that, obviously, I've had this problem all my life. So it used to happen to me when I was at school. And, of course, I wasn't married when I was at school. So so, yeah. <laughs> so I, I always remembered to write. I write with my right hand. I write with my right hand. But apparently, it, I think uh, my daughter's learned at school, there's this trick. This is also a life hack. And that if you put your hands like this yeah this one like right can you see that if you look at the, the the shape that your your finger and thumb is making one of them is making an l and that is left can you see yeah yeah that's this one the right yeah. that's this one apparently yeah. that's what they learned at school clever also not useful in a driving test when they say left hand down and you take your hands off the wheel and do that and say just a minute <laughs> that <laughs> wouldn't you work. Crash. The wheel, that crash. Work either. <laughs> crash the car wouldn't work at all let's so, yeah it doesn't help <laughs> Okay, let's move on from earphones to clothes now. And this is a, a Marie Kondo. Um, if you know who Marie Kondo is, she's the lovely Japanese lady who helps you to organize your house. She's a guru, isn't she? She the is. Guru she's house organization. Guru, guru organization. She's an expert. Uh -huh. So I don't know if this is her idea, but I learned it from her. And that's if you keep your clothes in drawers and not on shelves. Mm -hmm. stack them vertically so that you can see them all. Now, to stack means to put one on top of another. If you stack books, you put many books on top of each other. So let me show you a picture, and you can see what I mean, because a picture paints a thousand words, doesn't it? So it's easier if I just show you what I mean. And this is clothes neatly arranged vertically oh, then and then you can okay. see now i can't do this with my t-shirts because my t-shirts are on shelves and mm -hmm. i have some at the front and some at the back but my socks and my pants i do arrange like this and i can see exactly what ones mm -hmm. to wear yeah yeah. My daughter does that. I think she'd watched Marie Kondo videos. So uh, one of my daughters started arranging her wardrobe like that. And it's very practical. And it, she's kind of, it's uh, it's caught on in my household. So we're mm -hmm. all doing it now. Uh -huh. uh, to catch on is when another phrasal verb to catch on is means that it's, it's um, how would you describe <laughs> the idea has caught become, on. Become it means popular. it's become popular. Uh -huh. It has become infectious in our household. We're all doing that now. Uh -huh. Caught on. Uh -huh. 
so that idea is caught on in my household too and um and it's very useful and also like those drawers in that picture are very big and i have mm -hmm. a, a similar chest of drawers that piece of furniture is called a chest of drawers and i have a similar big chest of drawers and and the other thing that uh i don't know whether marie kondo suggested this or not but what i have actually bought recently is lots of little baskets and then I, in the baskets, in the drawers, I keep the things separate because it's very easy in a big drawer to lose things. So I have mm -hmm. socks in one basket and um, tights in another basket and, and they're all in the baskets. But you're quite right, vertical uh, stacking like that is much better. Mm -hmm. And we have a comment from Nancy who says mm -hmm. that the same thing with this before with, with writing, we were speaking about mixing up left and right and she uses both hands to write oh that means you're ambidextrous that's, that's what we right. call it in english ambidex ambidextrous <laughs> Ambi you write with both hands yeah uh-huh yeah great okay. <laughs> excellent now um moving on this one is i think very very useful let me just remove this picture and put the next hack on the screen now Mobile phones, sometimes you're watching a video or you're watching something on YouTube and you're holding the phone. That gets You can get tired, your, your arm aches or your hands ache. Well, if you take off your glasses, your sunglasses, because if you take these glasses off, you can't see the video, but if you take off your glasses, your sunglasses, you can put your mobile phone here mm -hmm. and watch... It holds the mobile phone and you can watch your mobile phone. Just put the glasses on the table and sunglasses and put your mobile phone on top. Oh, I, I'll try that. <laughs> I have tried this hack and it does work. It's and very it good. works. Uh -huh. I, ha I will try that because I, uh, one of my daughters lives away and um, we have little video calls and uh, mm -hmm. we, we often get tired holding the phone because we talk for so long. So we're, <laughs> we're talking to her. It'd be quite nice to put it on something so that we can we don't have to hold it all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, more hacks. More hacks. Um, a dustpan. Now, this is one of yours, Craig. So yes. have you done this? No, I haven't. <laughs> but, and I... And I'm really annoyed because I thought I had a picture, but I don't have a picture for this. But if you imagine a dustpan is a thing you use to when you sweep the floor and you you sweep the dust and, and the things, the rubbish from the floor, you sweep it into a dustpan, which is usually a plastic flat thing. But it has a handle with a groove, like a semicircle, like half a tube. So if you put that under the tap in your sink, you can fill up a bucket because sometimes you don't have enough room between the tap and the bottom of the sink to put the bucket in. Okay. So a bucket is a big container that holds water. The sink is where you wash your hands or wash the dishes in the, in the kitchen or the bathroom. And the tap is where the water comes out of. In American English, it's a, a faucet. In British English, it's a tap. And if you try to fill up a big bucket, sometimes it doesn't go in the sink. There's no room between the sink and the tap. But if you put a dustpan there, the water goes in the dustpan, runs out of the handle into the bucket. The handle? Yeah. Oh, you haven't got a picture of this. I'll find I'll find a picture. Seems of it. to me very messy that. I, I think me... I would make a bit of a flood in my kitchen if I tried that. Well, I'm and gonna... then I have yeah. some other questions about this hack because I read this hack and I I am a little bit skeptical, Craig. Okay. Because first of all, if you want something clean in your large container or your bucket, mm -hmm. one assumes that usually you want clean water in the bucket or in the container. Yeah. Why would you use a dirty dustpan to do that? Because your well, you water is going use... to be dirty, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, some, sometimes it do, you know it doesn't really matter because you know you can have a a dust. You, it does. You don't need clean water. 
I have found a picture. So if you'll give me a second. <laughs> and I then secondly, here's the second problem with that hack. Because, you know, I'm just pulling your hack to pieces, aren't I? Yeah. So, <laughs> so the second problem with that is, is it's more washing up, isn't it? You know, because you say to me. No, it's not. Well, Why if I it... want clean water, then I'm going to have to wash the dustpan first so that I can get clean water through the dustpan into my bucket. And look at that. Look, look at that. Look, how easy is that to do? So, you know, you should be keeping your dust pans relatively clean. They shouldn't be that dirty anyway. And if you want to mop the floor or clean the floor, then you can just the water goes in the dust pan and, and into the bucket. Very easy. And what's the problem with just getting a, a big jug or a cup or a bottle and, and filling it takes it, long, that it way? takes longer. It's all saving time. Time is, is precious. Oh, <laughs> I'm not convinced. <laughs> I haven't sold you, have I? You haven't sold me on that one. That one seems far too complicated and it'll probably make a mess for me. If you have any one. questions about this vocabulary, mm. if something's not clear, because this is quite difficult to explain, actually, uh -huh. um, then uh, please ask questions in the chat and we will do our best. I to... actually I actually have a handy dandier hack than that. Uh, what's right. a handy dandy hack a handy dandy hack <laughs> well when something is handy it means it's very useful and then we make this little sort of rhyme handy dandy if something is handy dandy it means it's very handy uh-huh and i have a handy dandier thing than the dustpan <laughs> to fill the bucket if the bucket doesn't fit and that is they actually sell now kitchen taps mixer taps a mixer tap where the, the hot and the cold water goes in the same tap that's called a mixer tap and they sell them now that they are like shower heads yeah but that's so you expensive. know the shower head we so had one my of those tap and in the broke. kitchen did it oh but yeah. i've got one in the kitchen and so whenever i have that i just pull the shower head out and then i fill it and that's the handy dandy yeah that's the that that's the that's the Porsche <laughs> filling your bucket that doesn't fit in the sink. <laughs> last week with Andrew, and I know there's some people watching in the chat who watched my live stream last week with Andrew. His ex chosen expression, one of them was la di da. Oh, so, la di da! <laughs> a perfect way to use this expression with Lynn, who's got this fancy, expensive tap that you pull out as a mm. like a garden hose, and you can take it anywhere in the kitchen. Then well, it doesn't come Andrew's out that far. It doesn't come out that far. It comes out about that far. But you can I water mean, your onions with it outside. I can fill my <laughs> kettle up without having to pick my kettle up. I just fill my kettle up like that, and I fill my pans up on the my pans. I put them on the bench, and then I can fill them up. It's la -di -da. Uh, very I, easy. It's very lardy da. Yeah. Uh -huh. I use a, I use a dust. No, I don't use a dust pan. But, but if you. <laughs> But if you um, do have a very small sink and not much space, then that's a hack that you could use. Uh -huh. Now, the next one is one of yours, isn't it, Lynn? Um, machine laundry bag. Tell us about uh -huh. that. <laughs> well, I have to confess. <laughs> I have to make a confession now, Craig. You don't because do this. I, no. <laughs> because I was, I was so lost for what can I put in this <laughs> to contribute to this lesson. I did actually invent this one, I have to confess, but I'm being honest, I invented this one. Okay. This is a, it is a combination of a thing that I use anyway. <clears throat> Lately now, well, what, I have a problem in my house. There are five people in my house, right? And in winter, we have a sock problem, right? Because we each wear a pair of socks every day, right? So when it comes to washing, you can do the maths in that. Per person, seven days, two socks every day. That's 14 socks per person. Wow. 14 yeah. times five is 70 socks, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My husband goes running three times a week, so he has an extra six, right? Oof. So we have 76 socks going in my washing machine every week. It's <laughs> a lot of socks. And then, of course, as people know... In every household, there lives somewhere in the house the sock monster. Yes. Do you have the sock monster? We have a sock monster, yeah. The sock monster is everywhere. Seems to, mm -hmm. you know, he is everywhere. <laughs> and the sock monster eats socks. So, you know, like you do your washing, you bring them out, and suddenly you discover that there's three socks missing. 
And where have they gone? And you look everywhere, but obviously the sock monster has eaten them and taken them somewhere. And mm -hmm. you don't know. And then occasionally the sock monster, just to make you really annoyed, he he brings the socks back at moments that you're not expecting. <laughs> you take another load of washing out and suddenly the socks are there again. You don't know where they've been. Right. <laughs> so you know the problem, right? So we have a yep. big problem with the sock monster. And what I do do with socks now is that I use these machine laundry bags. Have you seen those? They're sort mm -hmm. of like bags with a zipper on the top. Yep. And it's actually safer for your washing machine because sometimes socks get actually caught in the washing machine. So you put them in the bag and then, of course, when you bring them out of the washing machine, the socks are all together in one bag. So then you can hang them out and dry them and pair them and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I actually invented this hack because I thought what I'm going to do next, which I haven't done yet, but I am going to do it. One of the problems I have is that all my family put all their socks and all their dirty washing in our washing basket. And before I put the washing machine on, I have to sort through the washing basket, separate the socks, put the socks in the laundry bag, and then put it in the dishwasher. In the not in the dishwasher. In, in the, the dishwasher. Machine. No, in the washing machine. In the washing machine. Thank God for so that. So I put them in the washing machine. So then I thought, ah, oh, well, maybe a good idea would be to put the laundry bag already in the washing basket and force my family when they put their <laughs> socks in the washing basket to put the socks. In deposit the socks in the correct. It's a bit like recycling. Do you have recycle bins for your rubbish? You know, you have a you have a paper bin and a plastic bin. And I think I'm going to separate now my washing basket. Good and idea. And you can have white socks, for the socks, running socks, black so socks, dark exactly. socks. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Very good idea. The sock monster won't be happy, but I will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we don't have much time, so let's let's try and get through the rest quite quickly, so that we can give you all of this information that I'm sure you're you, you're dying to hear. Moving on to some travel tips that will help you when you're traveling. Now, this one I I do like very much, and sometimes you go on holiday, you forget your charger, to charge your mobile phone, or to charge your tablet, or to charge your um your watch if you have a, a chargeable watch or any gadget any electrical gadget that you take with you that needs to be charged and you've left your charger at home what do you do well i've got two solutions for you if you're staying in a hotel so your hotel's probably got a tv and at the back of the tv i'm sure you'll find something that looks like this and that's a usb port that you can use to charge um, things. But you need, obviously, the cable. And if you don't have the cable, most hotels have a lost property room or department where, where things are lost in the hotel. They keep them there in case the owner goes back to the hotel or asks for their possessions that they've left in the room. And it's really, really common for people to forget their chargers. And most hotels have, in reception, a big box. And in that box, there are lots of spare phone chargers and cables. So all you do is go down to the reception and say, this is my phone. Do you have a compatible charger that I can borrow to charge my phone? So this has happened to you, I suppose. It happened you, to me once at a conference, and I experience. and they did have a. I needed a cable, not a charger. They did have a cable uh -huh. that they lent me, and uh, it saved. It saved me. I was able to to connect something to my laptop mm -hmm. because people forget cables in the room. They get they go yes, under the desk, they, they're easy. in the drawer, uh -huh. they go behind the 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 wardrobe, and they get left in mm -hmm. the room. So there mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. Next. Next one. Oh, now I like this one. Uh -huh. Me too. I, I'm going to speak a little bit more slowly now because Paloma said that it's very difficult today. <laughs> I think it's because I'm getting too excited. <laughs> but at least you're hearing native speakers talking to each other, Paloma. <laughs> um, okay, I'll try to speak a little bit more slowly. But in this one, um, 
this is a great uh, tip and I use this a lot and it's to try to have cold water and a lot of people when they're in the summer and they go out they say oh I'm not going to take my bottle of water because the water gets really warm and then I want cold water and the easiest tip ever in life and this really works is that you fill a water bottle a quarter full or if you have a new water bottle and it's full already just empty out a quarter of it put it in the freezer and then when you take it out you can fill up with fresh water but most of the other water is solid frozen and you will find that during the day it takes a long time for that block of ice to melt and um, it actually makes you uh, I think you've put the wrong picture. Oh, on sorry. There. Yeah. <laughs> My mistake. Um, mm -hmm. sorry. It actually um, stays cold all the time. And I started using this trick years ago, and we love it. And what I've also done, an adaption of this, is that I noticed that we used to have cool bags that we used to take on picnics with us um, to the beach. And, and you usually have these blocks, these proper freeze blocks that you keep in the freezer and then you take them out and you put them in the cool bag and it keeps the cool bag cold. But in actual fact, you don't need to carry that extra weight. If you freeze your water, your water works as cool blocks to keep the rest of your food cold. So I've actually stopped using these freezing, you know, those blue blocks that yeah. you put in there. I've stopped using them because I just use water all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you have your cool drinks and you have your cool food, which is is great. Yeah. It, and I only... have used mm -hmm. this. I have used this hack and I've completely forgot about it. I used to do mm -hmm. this. I don't know why I stopped doing it, but it, it really works. And yeah. you have lovely cold water for most of the day. It's very, very, yeah. and it melts yeah. slowly. The ice melts very slowly. It does melt very, very slowly. And I think mm -hmm. it actually melts even slower than those cool blocks, to be frank yeah. with you. I, I really do think it lasts longer. Mm -hmm. Me too. Okay, the next one, going back to clothes again, we said to stack your clothes vertically, but uh, another Hack from you, Lynn, I think, to roll yeah. the clothes. Uh -huh. You roll the clothes up for your suitcase. You can get far more in the case. <laughs> I'm a very good packer because I always travel very heavy. <laughs> and if you want to take lots of things with you, instead of folding them and stacking them like that, the best thing is to do is to roll them. And also the advantage of rolling your clothes is that when you get to the hotel, when you take them out of the, uh, the case, they actually don't have creases in them creases the lines you know from where you folded them if you stack them all and press them in a case then mm -hmm. what you're actually doing is you're ironing in the creases but if you roll it then there are no creases and I do this with everything with my skirts with my dresses with t-shirts and they come out in a much better condition then when you try to put them in your suitcase and you 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 press everything down. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it saves a lot of space. I use this mm -hmm. technique as mm -hmm. well. It's very, very good mm -hmm. for saving space. Mm -hmm. Good good, uh, good tip. Um, you know, when you buy a loaf of bread in the supermarket, especially when the bread is pre-sliced in, in a plastic bag, you get those little plastic ties that mm -hmm. close the bag and, and keep the, the little clips, out. Uh, the plastic clips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, don't throw them away because I've got two very good hacks that you can use those for. The first mm -hmm. one, I, I have a picture to show you. So the first one here, um, if you're like me and you have lots of cables behind your computer, which I call spaghetti, <laughs> it's like it looks like <laughs> spaghetti then you and you don't know what cable goes where and it's a mess you can use those little plastic ties that you get in bread bags ah those ones yeah ah, and okay. they're fantastic for labeling your cables and you know exactly yeah. which one is the printer which one is the power which one is the microphone etc so you can label your cables with these ties oh i'm going to do that that's a really good tip. I'm going to do that because I have a similar spaghetti mess behind and I never know which cable is which. 
Uh-huh. And Great. you're going to like this one as well, because for the same thing, those tires, mm-hmm. you can use them for da, 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 da. keeping the end of tape open. Mm-hmm. So you can just easily, you don't have to look where the end of the tape is. Now, mm-hmm. this can work with tape or with painter's tape like this example here and you just use the bread tab keep it there and you always know where the end of your so you is. don't lose the end uh-huh because that's okay. really annoying isn't it on the tapes when you can't find the end uh-huh yep ah okay so they're, they're the the tabs i misunderstood that when i read it because i thought you meant those there's another way that bread bags are uh um are kept and it's like a white but it's a long tab and you twist it but like something like, like something like this. Where... Yeah, uh, but you didn't mean those. You meant those oh, other ones, and that's ones. much better. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm going to use that one. That's a good tip. Uh, you have redeemed yourself, Craig, at the last hour, the last Thank minute. You. you have redeemed yourself. So I think I shall forgive you because finally your last tip was useful and it's one of yours. <laughs> do we, is that the last one or do we have time for one more? What do you think? Well, we have time for one more if you want. Go on. Okay, you choose. Mm-hmm. Which one that's left would you like to um, go oh, for? Oh, do my carabiner. I like my carabiner. Your carabiner. Mm-hmm. I've go. got them here, though. I brought it for me here. Oh, you are. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, you are. So get a carabiner. You see this little carabiner? It's a carabiner clip. It's like a clip like that. Yeah. Or I think you had a picture. The carabiner is that type of connection. It's used in mountaineering as well. I think you had a picture of a proper carabiner too, didn't you? Yep. Just looking for it now. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. That's a carabiner. Okay. Um, And here... um, this is my carabiner, and I've had this for years, and I always have it on my key ring. Uh-huh. And it's handy dandy because, of course, many women with their handbags, we have lots of things in our handbags, and we can never find what we want. But since I have my carabiner in my handbag, especially my keys, right, then, of course, there's always a little hook in a handbag, yeah, like it can be there, and then I can attach them there. And then I fold them over like that. Oh, and wow. then when I zip my handbag closed, yeah, I always can access my keys immediately because they're here. You see? Fantastic. And you can put them on any bag because on any handbag, there's always something where you can attach them to. Uh-huh. And the other saving mechanism for my life is if you notice on my keys, I'm a very efficient person. What else do I have on my keys? A little USB drive. <laughs> <laughs> and all of any important documents, if I ever go anywhere, I have them on my little USB. And my USB is on my keys because my keys are the only things I never lose. <laughs> because of your carabiner. Because they're because attached of my to your carabiner. Bag. So I always have my data and my keys, the most important things. I like you need. it. Uh-huh. So there you I are. like it very much. Okay, well, unfortunately, we have to end it there. That hour went very, very quickly. It flew by. So we hope you've um, got some useful tips Mm -hmm. (laughs) from the kitchen and other parts of the house. And Mm -hmm. um, we will say goodbye. Of course, Lynn will be back in two weeks. Next week, I will be joined by Kevin, who you have met before, if you're a regular viewer. Kevin from deliberateenglish.com from uh, Chicago. Uh, and he will be here next week. But um, before we go, we'll just remind you where we're from. I'm Craig from mentioningles.com, where you can study English for free. And we have a podcast, inglespodcast.com, that's available on the website or anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And thank you very much for being with us, Lynn, today. Uh, That's your welcome. (laughs) I'm sorry if I spoke a little bit too quickly for everybody. (laughs) But at least it's listening practice. You can watch the video replay and then you can maybe put me a little bit slower or you might be able to catch up um, by watching once or twice. My website is putitlikethis.com and I'm an online English teacher. So if anybody's interested in classes, then you can always go to my website and then get in touch with me. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon. And until next time, have a 
great week and a great yeah. weekend. And I it. hope that some of the tips have been useful. I will try your tip about those. I like that bread tab cable labeling. I thought system. you would. I, thought I you like would. that. That appeals to my sense of organization. <laughs> and I'm going to try the one about the wooden spoon on the on the um on the frying pan or the pot and the one about chopping onions. So I'll be chopping, chopping onions, onions yeah. next uh -huh. week. I might have to do a masterclass where I show a video of that, but I'm sure that you can find masterclasses that do it better online. <laughs> okay, everybody. All right. So Take I care. hope you've had a nice time. Bye-bye. See Thank you, you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.